D.W. Griffith was the first great filmmaker to understand the psychological importance of editing. Working a decade after Porter, he did more than anyone else to advance the storytelling tools Porter had developed. Griffith invented and popularized techniques that established the basic grammar of film. His melodramas were the first to draw audiences into the emotional world of his characters. He certainly was the first man to use the close-up in a big way. This was revolutionary. It was so revolutionary that the producers, when they saw this, were aghast. They thought, you can't put this picture out like this. You can't cut to this big, ugly shot of somebody. First of all, we're paying for this actor, this actress. We want to see their whole body. We don't want to just see their face. Second of all, the audiences won't know what to respond to. They're going to be all confused. Well, the proof is in the pudding, and the reality is that the audiences were not confused at all. Griffith brought it together in one magnificent film, Birth of a Nation, and we saw the accumulation of sort of ten years of editing knowledge put into a movie. And all of a sudden, you had not only had close-ups, but you had flashbacks. Parallel action. And you had all sorts of things that he used to make the audience, his attention focused on a certain part of the frame. D.W. Griffith established the tenets of classical film editing. And classical film editing relied on the concept of the invisible cut, in which action would always be continuous and fluid and moving. The goal was to mask the cut so the audience wouldn't notice and could forget that they were watching a movie. Let's take another look. Notice how the gesture matches from one shot to the next? Griffith's seamless editing is still practiced today and was the dominant editing style in Hollywood movies for decades. At last. Look again. The cut is so smooth that it's barely noticeable. It's all foretelling the story. And all you want to do is get the person emotionally invested in the story. So it becomes this invisible craft. We call it the invisible art. And indeed, it is. I mean, the more invisible we are, the better we're doing our job. Unfortunately, the invisible style of editing kept editors invisible and unappreciated as well. For years, they have been the best kept secret of the movies. The first cutters were considered hands for hire rather than creative partners in the filmmaking process. They looked at the images by holding the film up to the light. Then they would check their work by running it through a projector and making the necessary adjustments. Griffith's main cutter was Jimmy Edward Smith, who virtually lived with him at the studio, where they worked far into the night, running the film shot during the day. Later, Smith's wife Rose joined the editing team. The Smiths married during the cutting of Intolerance. For their honeymoon, Griffith allowed them the weekend off. Lights! Needs about 20 minutes out of it. The Kazan film, The Last Tycoon, had a wonderful scene. It was obviously the story of Irving Thalberg. And I always took that as a wonderful metaphor about the, of the, uh, the editing process, that it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's silent, it's anonymous. <laughs> What's that, are you asleep? Jeez, goddamn movie even puts the editor to sleep. He's not asleep, Mr. Brady. What do you mean he's not asleep? He's dead, Mr. Brady. Dead? What do you mean he's dead? He must have died during... He's dead. The... We were just watching the rough cut. Jesus, I didn't... I didn't hear anything. Did you hear anything? Not a thing. Eddie... You probably didn't want to disturb the screening, Mr. Brady. 